Welcome to Art with Janine. In this video, I'm sharing how I added a tail to uh, this horse. I started with very light value of the color that was the color of the horse's tail, which was um, kind of a creamy, uh, yellowy color. And I started by adding with a very, very small brush, possibly a um, size one or zero, um, and a little bit of water in my paint in order to make it very fluid and easy to flow off this little brush. I looked at my photograph and put the lines, the first lines for the tail, um, down as a guide. These lines are the very defined lines that tell me the movement of the tail. And so I wanted to add just these lines to give me that guide. As you can see, it's a very careful process um, because you've got your painting in the background and you want to make sure that when you're painting you are being very careful to only add tiny bits um, because then there's less chance of um, like a spill um, going into the background from your brush. And uh, the trick to this, uh, these lines is to barely touch the canvas. So when you get a little bit of paint and you can only hold a little bit on the brush at a time and I usually just gently touch the paint and then bring the paint over and very gently barely touching the canvas just to release a little bit of paint. Um, this allows you to do very careful work. Now notice how I'm going to have to go like over the legs. So what I do is I just imagine I'm doing a continuous line, um, but I try not to touch the legs with the paint. If I do get a little bit on the legs, um, it might it, if the background's already dry, it might be easy just to rub off a little tiny bit. And uh, I just continue to do these lines going all the way down and around, kind of showing the movement of the tail in the wind um, or the, the horse is just swinging his tail. So just getting the general movement here. And again with the fine brush just very carefully and slowly. There's no rush to this. There we go. There's another line there. So I keep looking at the photo and then looking back at the painting and trying to match the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect though because, you know, I mean, no one really sees the photo in the end. I mean, they can see the photo if you want them to, but you're being inspired by the photo to create the painting. And um, there's no way that the corn in the back is the exact replica of the corn in the photo. So um, I don't think the horse's tail, anything with this much detail doesn't have to be that accurate. Uh, it's just gonna have the general flow of the tail and the general look of the tail. And here I am going over the legs again and being careful not to get paint on the legs. If I do get paint on the leg, all I need to do is put a bit of water on my brush and then gently tickle the area that got the paint on the leg because again, you know, applying the tail should probably be a day after the horse dries because that way it's dry and you can just dab it off with tissue after wiping it with a little bit of water and it won't affect the paint on the horse. It's good to do this kind of thing in stages, you know, each day doing another job. And here we are speeding up for you the process of the first layer and once the fine lines are added I fill in some of the areas with more of a solid block of colour leaving just a few like lines and um, gaps where you can see the background through the hair. Just 
just getting that shape right. There we go. So now in this video, we're looking at the tones of the color. So you'll have maybe two or three tones. Um, in the horse's hair, in the photograph, there is uh, different tones in the hairs. So that's actually a good thing because it allows you to just keep layering tone after tone onto the tail and you may put a thick brush stroke down and then when you put the next stroke over it in a lighter tone it appears to be two hairs or three hairs together so it it sort of breaks it up a little bit and gives it more of that effect of hair. And at some point you're going to have a lot of light on the tail and you, you'll know that you'll need to start adding a bit of shade so what I do for shade is I take the black paint and either mix a little bit in with the with the light color um, or just water down some black paint, lots of water, a little bit of paint, and then just use that as a sort of a, a glaze shade uh, with a tiny brush and carefully applying it. Now just a little bit of water again to clean off the leg. It's good if you do this immediately after um, getting paint on because it might be harder to remove later on because it is acrylic paint and it dries fast. So now I'm going to be taking some of the black here and I'm mixing with a little bit of the, the color that I was using just a little bit on the edge there and it's creating a little bit of grey, darker shade of the colour. And putting that on at the back here, there's a bit of shadow between the hair and the horse's rear end. <laughs> so I'm just adding some of that now. I guess you have to have a lot of patience because it's very careful work and uh, it's I, I kind of see it like doing a puzzle for me it's uh, putting the little pieces together and just looking back at the photo and seeing where there's more shadow in the hairs and where the light is where the shadow is you start to see patterns and it becomes easier to apply them. And when you want the uh, finer details, um, you have to try to press even like lighter on, like not press as much on your brush. Right now I'm just sort of adding the shaded areas so I'm not worrying too much about the thickness of it. Uh, but I am down on the hairs that are hanging down there because um, I need those to look thin as they blow in the breeze or from the swinging of the tail. Now I'm noticing that here on the tail um, there is supposed to be a bigger gap um, where you can see the background. So I'll probably be using a little water on my brush in a bit to wash that area out. And, uh, dabbing off any blotches that happen accidentally or if I feel I put too much shade somewhere I just use a little water tickle it and then gently dab it off with tissue. Now again with the shade and the little hairs at the top, some of the horses little hairs poke out at the top of the tail, some shorter hairs. And it's a little tricky but uh, you want to have a few little tiny spikes poking out. Um, so again, it's always a challenge to use the tiniest, tiniest bit of your brush and uh, to not press. 
you know, when you learn to draw and in color, you learn to press your pencils, but with the brush, it's the opposite. It's always a challenge to use less and less pressure um, to let the color do the work and less of the pressure from your hand. Let the brush give you something. There, you can see now with layer upon layer, it's starting to look more like finer hairs. In the next section of this video, we're going to move into, um, again, going into even finer detail. So now we're going to look at the brushes we're using and uh, try and find the smallest ones possible. I mean, you may have a brush that is a zero, a round brush, or a zero, zero round brush. You may even have a fine liner brush that has a really fine tip on the end. So you're going to want to try and pull out all your smallest brushes for this. Kind of fun, bit of a challenge. Okay, so again, you're gonna to need to add water to your paint. Um, you're not using the paint at the full thickness. You can add a thinner if you want, an acrylic thinner, um, or you can add uh, just water. Water works just fine. So again, trying to apply as little pressure as possible. I'm using that long fine liner brush. See that little tiny hair. And uh, just getting these little tiny hairs to stick out around the tail will give you the illusion that there's a lot of fine hairs in that tail. Even if all the brush strokes in the tail are not super fine. And here's my tiny brush again. And I'm dipping it in the water first, then the paint and then gently touching it on the side of tissue in case there's too much fluid in this tiny little brush. So you can see how very little um, I'm gonna have on the brush. And you might just get one little tiny stroke out of that. You have to be very patient and uh, just keep carefully. So I'm showing you here where you just sort of watery paint here and then just you may need a bit of tissue to, to drain. I usually drain up where the metal part of the brush is so that it doesn't take the fluid out of the end of the brush, the tip of the brush. And again, a very careful application to get a fine hair or two out of that brush before I need to reload it. This, just the tail alone could take a few hours um, to complete. Just going back and forth uh, with your light and your shade and the fine lines to give the effect of those really thin hairs. Now this painting is, uh, I mean, I'm going for realism as much as possible, except for the sort of a uh, little bit of a blur in the background so that I have this focal point of the horse. Um, but I mean, there are, you know, you can do paintings, um, obviously, where they're not so focused on realism and, you know, you don't have to worry too much about the details. But this particular painting, uh, we are. so. I'm just giving you a few tips on uh, how to accomplish those fine lines. So you pretty much need some very tiny brushes and a steady hand and patience and challenge yourself to use less and less of the brush as you go along. So it's just really tiny little brush strokes uh, when doing something like this. And it's almost complete. This video is one of many that I've taken during the process of painting this artwork. Hopefully the tips and tricks you've learned for painting the tail on your horse 
will help you with painting the mane of your horse. You will find on my YouTube channel a video which is a time lapse of painting the mane of this horse. It's not the same slow process with the step-by-step -step details, but it shows you in high speed the steps I went through to create the mane on my horse. And hopefully with the tips and tricks you've learned here, it should be a breeze. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to creating more. Please check out other videos for other artworks, other tips and techniques on my YouTube channel, Art with Janine. Bye for now.